Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the channel. My name is Tony. This is the 15 Minute Gamer channel and today we're talking about Digital Combat Simulator World or DCS. Now I know I've never covered this game on the channel before. I stumbled across, well stumbled across is the wrong word. I've known about this game for a very long time. Um, probably years, years and years and years. But the way it monetized, the way it worked, the modules and that sort of thing always led me to walk away from it. However, this year I got stuck into Star Citizen, as we know, and that thing sucked my money dry. My wallet was crying. <laughs> you can hear it now. Did you hear it crying just a little bit? Um, Yeah, that thing took my money. And I started to see games in a bit of a different way. And I thought, you know what? If you're going to invest time into a game, what's wrong with spending more money on it? Not just for pointless things like horse armor or different sword, but I'm talking about different things to enhance your enjoyment of the game, which is what Star Citizen does very well, but just very expensive. So, DCS World runs very similarly in a lot of ways, where it's a free-to-play game. You can download this game and play it for free. Nothing to stop you doing that. Difference is, if you want to then expand on that, you're going to have to pay. We're going to cover that in a bit. So, why am I doing this video? I'm doing this video to give you what DCS is, why I picked it up, what I've got from it, what you need to look out for, some caveats, and also four points. Four points I think you're going to need. I've researched this game all week. I've been looking up videos. I've watched hundreds of videos, read loads of stuff. And unfortunately, a lot of the people who cover this game are very experienced sim players. Now, even the people who go, I'm new, check this out, are massively experienced sim players and either have all the gear or are going to be able to afford all the gear. I am not an experienced sim player. Yes, I play a lot of sims, but I am not an experienced sim player. I do own a Hotas. Yes, we will cover that in a bit. And... I want to bring this back to a beginner's perspective. I want people to be able to play this game and enjoy it from a beginner's. How did I learn? What have I figured out on my journey to learn this game? How have I learned? Where have I learned from? How do I set things up? And I thought that would be a really interesting journey to take with you all. So we are taking it. But the first video is all about how to get started, where to get it, modules, how it all fits together and works. So what is DCS? DCS, Digital Combat Simulator, is in current 2.5 and it is a free-to-play digital battlefield game. Um, the developers say our dream is to offer the most authentic and realistic simulation of military, air military aircraft, tanks, ground vehicles and ships possible. The free download does include a vast mission area of the Corsius region, which is basically the Black Sea in Georgia. It also includes the flyable Russian Su-25T, or the Frogfoot, and also WW-2, as in World War II, North American TF-51D fighter. Yes, this has World War II fighters in. You can have a Spitfire in this game. It also has World War II maps, so you can have Normandy, and it's got map packs and stuff like that. It's, it's, there's a lot to it. So basically, you can fly a lot of um, aeroplanes from World War II to modern. Now, the modern bit... I'm not as sure about I don't think there's as many modern aircraft as I was hoping for. Like, I was thinking maybe the Eurofighter Typhoon would be in here and stuff like that. Like, the Apache helicopter's coming, but it's not in yet. And the Apache's just the best helicopter out there. Everyone knows that. It's a cool helicopter. So, yeah, it is missing a few little things. But there are over two dozen aircraft available to purchase outside of the game. So, yeah, you've got to take it. It is free. And you do get two vehicles or two aircraft. I might say ships throughout this because I play a lot of Star Citizen. You're buying ships. But two aircraft and you get a map. Uh, that's it for free. For free, it's there's stuff there. But there's no way to earn that or unlock or progress. You have to spend real money in this game. And this is where it comes to one phrase that I just want to kind of talk about. Yes, it's free, but it's an investment. If you're going to play this game, you're going to invest not just money, but time. And that's the whole point of this game. And this is why I've been investing a full week now of my time, almost constantly researching, watching videos, reading, and playing this game. And you know what? 
I'm loving it. I think it's so enjoyable, and I just that's why I need to do these videos and start getting the word out there about DCS. So, where do you get this game from? There are two sources, Steam and the website. There is no difference in the version between Steam and the website. From what I can gather, though, if you get the Steam version, you cannot play your modules if you then got the website version down the line. However, you can the other way around. There's also like user-created content, which I'm not 100% sure if you can then use that on the Steam version. So everybody asked in the Discord, and the Discord was lovely, the couple that joined, said get it from the website. There was a few Steam users out there, but most people said go to the website. And the sales happened around about the same time, but you normally get the, the website sales for longer and quicker. So be that with you, mate. Download, it's around about 60, 70 gig. And there's a downloader, and then you just download. It, takes, it doesn't take too long. And then you're frustrate into it. Um, and that said, I've checked this game out before. I checked it out years ago, but I didn't have a flight stick or HOTAS. I don't think I even had an Xbox controller back then, and I just found the game pretty hard to control. I didn't understand it. I didn't have the time to invest in it. And I just uninstalled it and put it away. I, I really wanted to play it, but I just couldn't do that. And also, as I said, I wasn't used to spending money on games then. Back then, me was like, oh, I'll spend £40 on a game and that's it. Now I'm like, yeah, Star Citizen, still not me money. Hmm. I understand gaming a little bit different now. So yeah, I tend to concentrate more on games now and really look for that experience behind the game. And you know what? If I've got to spend to get a better experience and I'm happy to spend that money, that is fine. I was actually looking at War Thunder at the same time because I really want something to get into. But the grind on War Thunder just sounds absolutely terrible. So this is where DCS came out. And the video I came across to sort of push me in this direction was a guy called... Um, what was he called? Spud Knocker. That's it. I will put a link in the description for all the people I mentioned in there. I watched him do a video and I was like, oh, this game looks really cool. And that's when I started this journey of just checking out. Because for some reason, when I typed in War Thunder, it must have obviously, cur you know, learned, oh, maybe DCS is the interest of you. Have this, have this. You know what YouTube's like. And that's when I saw uh, Spudnock, and I just um, joined his Discord, chatted with a few people, just asked a few questions, like, how is it? Do I, you know, what's the best to do? Is it easy to learn? Blah, blah, blah. Everyone seemed very nice on the whole. Um... And I watched a few more of these Spud Knocker videos and kind of really got that bug to kind of play it. And he's going to be one of the ones I recommend. We're going to come to reference guides and people I recommend later on. But yeah, definitely one of the things. Uh, when you download the game, you, as I said, you get the Frogfoot, which is a Russian Su-25T, which is quite old, I would guess from the 70s, and the World War II. There is some tutorials. And the tutorials are absolutely shit. This is why we're going to talk about reference guides and videos and stuff like that. Um, if we just take tutorial 3, for example, on the SU-25, it's like, right, do a basic landing. Now, I just want you to imagine a tutorial teaching you how to do a basic landing. I'm just going to give you two seconds. Right, what would you expect that to be? Runway approach... How to put your gear down, how to put your flaps, how to land. Yeah? No, nope, not in this game. This game had you navigating around waypoints. If you miss these waypoints, the tutorial will not open up and tell you the next line of conversation. Also, the conversation is massive. Now, if I remember in editing, I'm going to have this in the background now. I'm talking about two or three minutes of chat before you even get to land. Then you've got to navigate through clouds and stuff like that to land. And I played this tutorial about five times, and I was like, this is ridiculous. It's the restart. It's the problem. No point in tutorials is to get you into the action quick. Now, for me, this was a problem because I want to be able to try and try and try try landing. I want to see how different ways work, how fast I can go, when I can do it. This tutorial didn't do any of that because it's got too much chatting at the beginning and not enough just reset to where you are. And that's the problem with this game a lot of the time is the tutorials. They're not very good. They're too talky. I'm not too talky as in for too long. In great for the first time, but you can't skip them. And also when you're doing them, it might say press this button, but you can't press that button until the tutorial has finished talking. 
and then you can press it which then allows the tutorial to continue it's really annoying so yeah this is why you've got to go outside of the game to learn how to play so i looked at the frog foot i was like right this is stupid i can't even land the bloody thing and went right okay so i'm gonna watch some videos and i started watching some videos of the fa18 which is a multi-role you know mainly navy sort of airplane and then I was watching, I was like, hang on a minute, I'm watching a video clip on an FA-18 of how to fly a frog foot. This is where the game moves away from a lot of other simulators. This game, you need to invest your time, your effort, your learning on the airplane, I almost said ship, that you're going to fly throughout your journey within this game. So... When we bring it back, I play a lot of flight sims. You know, I played Microsoft Flight Sim. I played I Class Elite Dangerous in there. Ace Combat series, Tom Clancy Hawks, you know, the Fighter series. I've played a lot of Air Combat, all the way at the Apache games and Comanche on the Amiga. But a lot of them either focused on one particular aircraft or were arcadey or simulator in a way where once you flew one of them, you could understand how to fly everything else. But and this is again where Edit and Tony needs to actually do his job properly. Is the SU25 is from the 70s. The FA18 is from the 80s, um, 80s and 90s. And up, but still getting flown now. So they have different radars. Well, in fact, I don't think the SU25 really has a radar. It has different waypoint navigation, it has different systems, it has different missile controls. For example, the FA-18, you can fit um, missile pods that you can have one under your thing that tracks targets, like, you know, the little cameras you see on films and stuff. You can have all that. You can't have that on the SU-25. So I was watching videos going, right, I'm learning how to fly and stuff, but I'm learning the wrong way. So this is where I took a step back and went, right, now I need to figure out what sort of pilot I'm going to be, what I'm going to do. And this brings me to point number one. Yes, 12 minutes in. Oh, DCS. And this is modules. So, the game sells you modules. Modules con contain aircraft. Some contain missions. There's a bunch of missions out there. Some contain extra things on top of that, like packs, or like, say, it might contain multiple airplanes. And this is where you really got to think of, or, okay, what sort of plane do I want? What sort of pilot do I want to be? There's helicopters in there as well. So you've got the Huey, you've got the Gazelle, you've got the, I think it's the MI-28 maybe or something. I said, I'm not an expert. Um, the Apache is coming. I can't wait to fly that one. Um, and there's also two different types. There's basic model or low fidelity and high fidelity. Low fidelity is just a basic model. It's there to fly, shoot, and it's a bit more arcadey in how it plays. Then you have the full fidelity models, which are fully clickable. You can interact with every button in the cockpit. You know, if you want to turn oxygen on, you turn the oxygen on. You've got checklists to do. And the FA-18, if you want to do a full takeoff from cold and dark, about 15 minutes to click all the buttons. That's not a lie. 15 minutes to take this thing off. You can do auto start, and you can also start in about five minutes if you skip a lot of the procedures. But it's there. That's how long it's going to take. So you can choose. There's two different ways. So you got basic or full. And then you've got to think about what aircraft you went for. I went for the FA-18. It was between that and the AC-10. Because I just love the AC-10 Warthog uh, tank buster. I think it just looks incredible. I love the big gun. The gun goes brr and kills everything in its sight. And I went for the FA-18 just because I want the carrier operations as well. Because I thought that was a fun thing to learn, fun thing to do. A lot of the carrier videos just look so cool. So I was like, right, okay, FA-18 is for me. Full fidelity. I can also use it as air to air, air to ground. So I, it's a multi-role fighter. And you've also got to think of that. Do you, want to, do you think you're going to play this game as a air to air? Well, then there might be a better um, aircraft view than the F-18. Maybe the F-16 Viper or whatever it's called. I hope that was right. <laughs> I was like, I have loads of people going, it's this, god damn, you called all the planes wrong. I, I literally don't care. Um, so, yeah, you've got that and you've got loads of other things. Do you want to go World War Two? Do you want a propeller? Do you want to fly Spitfire? 
do you want to have an American? Do you, there's also a new one for the Pakistani Air Force, which was developed by China, which a lot of people say they get. There's the Mirage, I think it's called, which is French, I believe. Um, there's that to play with. So you've really got to think of where you want your play style to go. For me, I wanted kind of that multi-role where I could dogfight. I could also bomb things on the ground. So you've got to sort of look around in the side. There's loads of guides on the internet if you want to check out if you want the F-18, the AC-10, if you want to do helicopters. And also, one thing I totally forgot to mention is at the moment, this game is doing full free fly events. You can try all the modules for free. You can fly any of the, the I was going to say ships again, any of the airplanes, anything you want to do. You can try all the different maps all for free for like 14 days 13 days or something so it's a perfect time to go and check it out right moving on to point number two is and this links into number one is an investment over time the reason i'm saying that is this game is fully playable with a mouse and keyboard i, I wouldn't recommend it but it's playable so what else could you kind of need and what do you need to make this game better experience for everyone number one of course is a hotas i have the x52 flight control by seal tech i got this for uh, microsoft flight simulator i've used it on star sits and i'm not a huge fan of it on star sits and i just prefer using my mouse um on here though it comes in very handy because there's lots of controls you have different sensors you have throttle controls you have trims you have missile releases you need to put your gears down and you haven't really got time to move your hands all over the keyboard and memorize the hundreds of keyboard controls so yeah i'd recommend a hotas if you're going to head out there and give this game a go next up is tracking so this is infrared tracking there's a couple of different sources and this is so you can add that immersion and looking around the cockpit because when you're in a dog fight and i've been practicing dog fights a lot i find it really hard to track where the other airplanes are like ridiculously difficult to track where they are it's not like tom clancy hawks where you'll have a marker on them constantly and you can just chase them round and round and round once that goes out even if you've got it tracked once it goes out your hood range or a certain area you lose tracking and your radar isn't 360 degrees it's that's not how radar works in real life so your radar's at the front so if you're not looking at it, you can't even see the thing i presume there's a backwards radar i guess uh, there might even be a 360 radar i don't know but yeah from the f18 there's not from what i can see anyway um so the thing called infrared tracking and there's track ir is probably one of the biggest there's i think it's called tobias I think that's how you pronounce it, or Toby Eye Track. And they're both around about $130 to $140, which is a little bit expensive for me. I wasn't willing to pay that. And how it works is you attach it to the side of your headset or cap. You then have a camera on top of your monitor. And then as you move your head, the infrared on the cap or whatever you're wearing will track and it'll move your head around and you can use it on american truck simulator elite dangerous star sets and it, it gets used in so many games just imagine vr you know when you got vr headset on you look around like that so i picked up one called track hat track hat was half the price of the other ones it's made by a guy down south i think it's bath maybe uh, in England, of course. And it was around about for the full kit, £70. You can get the cheaper version for around about 40 You can also just get a track hat. That's a hat you wear on your hat. Hat, hat on your hat. God, so many hats. It's like the cat in the hat. Um, you wear a cap on your head and plug it into your computer and that tracks you. That's about 50 quid. So it's about half the price difference. And from all the reviews I can see, it works really well. So expect a review on that soon. So yeah, minimum, you're going to want a HOTAS. Track IR sort of thing is probably really good if you're going to get really into this game. Uh, rudder pedals are something a lot of people mention. I've got twisty HOTAS. So I can just twist and it'll rudder. Not found it too bad. You can get collective if you want to just do um, helicopters. So, you know, like collective stick. Again, it's an investment. HOTAS, I got mine secondhand for about 70 quid. They've went up in value quite a bit because of Flight Simulator. So I think they were looking around about 90 to 100 now. You can get them anywhere up to about 400 pound for the, I think it's called like a Warthog, which just looks awesome. Um, so yeah, it's kind of how it goes. And VR, if you've got VR, obviously you can skip the track IR, which is going to save you 150 pound if you've got it already. 
Now, point three is reference guides. And this is what I spent most of my time before I even opened up the game looking at. Now, there are five I'm going to recommend here. First up is Chuck's Guides, which are massively in-depth PDF documents. I can't even describe it. The FA18 one is 500 pages long. Yes, 500 pages long. This guy explains every button, explains what they show, how to start it up, how to power it down, how to do carrier operations. I would really recommend downloading that. Really good read as well. Well put together. This guy just is incredible. However he does it, I don't know, but he just seems incredible. Next up is uh, Matt Wagner, who taught me a lot about how to fly the F-A-18. He's, I think, works for Eagle Dynamics by the looks of it. And he does the tutorials and stuff like that within the game um, as well, because he has recordings on there. And he covers the videos in not massive, like, eight, nine-minute chunks, and will show you what to do. But again, very experienced, so this is where I had a lot of problems with people going, right, okay, so if you just start up the FLIR and the HIS, and if you just put a course of 272 in, I'm like, what? what? Why? Where? How? Understand? I don't understand what you're saying kind of thing. Um, so yeah, he can be a little bit like that. Very good though, but a little bit like, if you don't understand what he's going on about, it can get a little bit confusing. You got Spud Nogger, which was the guy who actually introduced me to it in the first place. Um, his videos are really well done. I like the cinematics of it all. Uh, yeah, really good. Grim Reapers are kind of the biggest community out there. They do lots of videos. More on the quick side, so it's kind of like, right, okay, how do I do this? And they'll go, right, just click there. And you're like, oh, okay. So it doesn't really go into details of what they're doing. There's usually another video backing up that detail, and you'll have to go, right. So he's using FLIR, Fleur, uh, Sensor Pod, or whatever it's called. Now... I'm going to have to watch another one of his videos to work out how to use it properly. And from what I've seen, he's taught me quite a lot. Very, very good. Um, and then a guy called Red Kite is probably the final one um, I'd recommend. I've seen a lot of people recommend him. Uh, very good at what he does. Very in-depth to how it all sort of fits together. Again, all of these, though, are very experienced players. And I find them a little bit confusing, which is why I've decided to go off and do my own for proper beginners who know nothing like me um and finally point number four is the in-game tutorials which is linking into point number three i like my little links going in here are oh, just shit that i said they're just not good enough the fa 18 ones are a little bit better but this moves into learning a little bit more about the game and mission editing and mission editing looks complicated it's not really so what i do is i've just basically set up a mission editor for my um, aircraft, loaded up with bombs. I then put some targets on the ground. I put myself about 10 nautical miles out and see what I can do. Because it's quicker than the tutorials. And it's better as well because I can just reset the scenario by pressing, I think it's shift control R or shift R or something. Resets the tutorial. I can pause it whenever I like. I can play around with the buttons and it's just the best way to do it. So I'm going to do a whole video on that. And again, I've watched a lot of videos on how to create missions. However, none seem to just bring it back to basics and why it might be handy to have instead of the tutorial. So again, we're going to jump in there and I'm going to get more and more practice using it. And then I'm going to show you guys how to do it and how I did it and how I'm learning how to play the game. And that's kind of the four points there. You haven't even flown... well. At this point, you could have even not flown an aircraft yet. And this is hours and hours and hours of prep. Like, I've sat there for hours now just sitting, watching them videos, reading that PDF, looking through the website, thinking of what aircraft I want, watching people's videos on the F-16, on the F-18, on the AC-10, on the helicopters. I really wanted the Huey module. And I then got it on the free fly event, checked it out and went, huh. I don't like this. This isn't very good. And straight away, I was like, I don't want to be a helicopter pilot. This game is confused enough as it is, let alone mixed in with being a helicopter pilot. So instantly, I took it out of my basket. And once the free fly event is over, I'm not getting the Huey module because it's just too much to learn. I've got other things to learn on how this FA-18 works. I've learned how missiles work. I've learned how bombing works. I've learned how to set fuses. I've learned how to set 
cluster munitions to go off at 1,500 feet. I've learned how the radar works, how to get the bars across, how to track things, how navigation works, how to set up screens, how to cold start an F-18 from nothing to get up in the air. I've learned how to land. I've learned how to crash in the back of an aircraft carrier. Okay, maybe that was bad to learn. I'm now learning a little bit of how to record videos and stuff so that I can put up some cool videos while I'm playing. And yeah, that is DCS. It's a 25 minute video. I hope it's been useful. That is why I'm playing DCS. That is why I'm doing these videos. And I just hope this gets some new players involved in the game. Those who are scared to give it a try, I hope it kind of just edges them into trying it because there's a lot to learn. But if you're willing to put that effort in, I feel this is going to be a super rewarding game. And I want you to be on this journey with me and enjoy it. So thank you very much. I'll be back probably after the new year with some tutorial videos of how to do all the things inside the game. And thank you very much. And I'll catch you all in the next one. Goodbye.